Question, what grit do I sand off the current paint on a vehicle? Uh, and do you recommend sealing the entire body before doing base coat? So, uh, Richard, again, it, it's going to depend on the condition of the current paint. All right. Uh, maybe what I could do quickly is share my screen because I, I have something. Let's see. Let's see if I can share my screen. Share screen. I think you guys are going to be able to see my screen now, right? Okay. So if it looks something like this, all right, this is pretty, pretty bad. Can I blow this up? No, it's not really blowing up. All right. If it looks something like this, it's pretty bad. You're going to want to use 150 grit sandpaper for something like this because it's going down through to the primer and metal uh, to basically feather everything out, okay? Uh, if it seems like while you're sanding the edges, do you guys see my mouse or no? I don't know if you see my mouse or not. But if you're sanding the edges down and it keeps peeling and it sands off easily, you pretty much want to keep sanding, okay? Uh, basically take the whole thing down to metal, like do the whole trunk, do the whole door, uh, do the whole because you want to get rid of that bad paint because it already has bad adhesion to the primer to the metal. Okay, um, you're gonna want to go down, and then I would use an epoxy primer to go over that, followed by a 2K filler primer. You could even use a DTM primer, which is a direct to metal, which is a, a good primer as well. Um, and some epoxy primers are DT, not epoxy. Some two regular 2K filler primers. I'm using ECG, been using these guys for a while. It doesn't say DTM, but it's pretty much a DTM because if you look at it, it says you can go direct to metal. So DTM means direct to metal. All right. Um, and then you could just put that on and then block it out and you're ready for paint. And this also acts as a sealer or a good, you know, a good foundation uh, to put base coat on. on. So you don't necessarily always have to put sealers on it. Um, I do use a 1K sealer at times um, if I'm prepping my final stages and I have a little metal showing at the end, you know, when you're pretty much ready for paint, you got metal. This is a 1K sealer. You just shake it up, mix it up, strain it, and just spray it right on over the metal, okay, or some of the body filler if you're showing and then you put your base coat right on top of it. You don't have to sand it or anything. So if I use a sealer, this is the only sealers that I use. Um, they have other sealers that you use to spray the entire vehicle. Um, but it's not really necessary unless you're totally anal. You, you want to get the best possible job. I mean, you still can get the best possible job by avoiding a regular sealer stage. Okay. Um, I don't know if you guys see a, a video of me as well, but let's see. Okay, so let's see if we can hide this. Uh, we'll go back to StreamYard and uh, stop sharing screen. Okay, so um, if it's bad, you can go with a 150. If your paint is okay, right? If you're sanding over, you know, paint that's already shiny and looking good that has good adhesion like that, you, you basically just need to scuff it down with like a 400 grit. And you can spray base coat right over. You can spray any color base coat right over that if you want to, okay? Because you got clear coat on it. This is all clear coated down, you know, candy, right? You could just sand that with 400 grit and put a top coat right on top of that. So I want to do some graphics on top of base coat paint and then cover the graphics in clear coat. Uh, it will take a day to complete the graphics. Would I need to sand the base coat graphics before clear? You don't have to. Nope. Um, you could sand with 800 grit, get your panels ready, do your graphics, your pinstriping, whatever, spray your base, do it and clear coat it. Okay. 24 hours is cool. You don't have to go sanding it. Okay. If you want to scuff it down a little, you could. Um, if, if, if they're solid colors, yeah, no problem. If they're metallic, just be careful. I would use a fine, you know, you can scuff it, give it a quick scuff with like a thousand grit or something before you clear it you know, to take off high edges or whatever. Okay, you could even wet sand it. Um, I have a van with a dented quarter panel, pushed it out as much as I can from the inside out, but still needs some pulling. Should I pull the rest out with a stud welder? Yes, you could. Did you submit photos and, uh, let me check here. Did you submit photos? Was it a van here? Um, was it the quarter panel? Was it the quarter panel of a, yep, this is it. I'm going to go ahead 
I'm going to go ahead. Actually, I'm going to be making a video for you um, right now. It's here. I have it on a PowerPoint, but I'm going to go ahead and share my screen for you guys quickly and go over Steven's. Okay, so here he is. Hey, Tony, uh, VIP member for four plus years. You've helped me a ton, dude, in both auto body and flipping cars. Appreciate you without causing more damage. I don't want to cause more dense waves. Oh, shit. Hold on, hold on. I don't want to cause more dense waves from pushing it out too much. Should I use a stud welder and slide hammer then apply Bondo? Uh, does not have to be perfect. Okay, so it looks good. It looks like you got it out pretty good. Um, if you want, I would just, you could just get a stud welder and just kind of pull it out a little. Um, just make sure that, you know, when you pull it out, it's not out too much. So what I like to do, and I have videos in VIP, you should look at the Godfather project. We use the stud welder and slide hammer a lot in that video. We were doing a lot of video uh, body work on that Dodge Ram project, okay? Um, if you're gonna be pulling with your slide hammer, you're gonna wanna make sure to pull and then tap your dent around it to strengthen the metal up, okay? Um, and if, if you pull out too much, you can always just tap it back in again. Sometimes it'll pop back in uh, but then you're going to have to go in the back, push it out again, and then just keep tapping and strengthening the metal. Uh, and then grind it all down and then put your body filler on it and shape it by block uh, or using a DA or a straight sander. So you got it. I mean, it looks good. Um, and then you just sand out the, bo the bottom uh, bumper cover there. You could even give that a skim coat of body filler, uh, align it all. It doesn't look like a, a bad damage at all. It looks like this is easily doable in a couple of hours. G says, isn't one of the purpose of a silo to ensure you have the exact same color behind what you're painting? Uh, if you have black underneath one and white underneath another, well, they look different. If you put enough coats on it, if you put enough paint coats, it doesn't matter what color you have underneath because your paint coats are going to cover it either way. You can have blue on one side, white over here, but if you're painting black on top of it, yeah, the first coat, right? The lighter side isn't going to cover as much, but as you put two, three coats on, it's all going to be the same color. So, yeah. So, you know, it, it doesn't matter. That's why, you know, if you're painting the same color, like if you have a, a car that has primer spots all over, a red car with gray primer spots all over it, okay, you could use a tintable primer so you don't have that. Or if you have the gray, when you're about to paint the complete car, that's why what you do is you hit the primer areas with your red base coat first, two coats, just to get it the same color. Then you go around the car, two coats for your new paint job. You get what I'm saying? This is exactly how I show you how to paint in VIP. We have multiple videos covering that process. You always want to cover your primer spots first with your new base coat and then blend in and then cover the rest of the vehicle or the blend or whatever you're doing on the third and fourth coats. Okay. So with enough coats, it doesn't matter what you have underneath because you will cover. How to fix paint damage from water etching. Um, okay, so you're talking about how water spots and water minerals e you know, eating up into your clear coat. The only way to really fix it is you can, depending on how bad it is, you can pretty much buff it out. Sometimes a, a rubbing compound will just basically take it out if it ain't that bad. If it's really bad, you might want to get a thousand grit or 1200 grit or 1500 grit sandpaper or even 2000 grit and just wash, wash it. Okay. Um, and then buff it out with compound and finishing glaze. Um, sometimes it's so bad that you just want to repaint it. So you would just basically repaint the hood or the side of the car or whatever. Okay. And if you're going to be doing a repaint, you're going to want to cut down your clear coat with four to 500 grit uh, in that area, you know, four to six, four to five, four to six um, to put, to get it prepped up flat. So you could put your fresh base coat on top of that. And you could paint uh, a urethane, a base coat, clear coat right over sanded and prepped clear coat. Okay. Clear coat is a good foundation to put new paint on top of. Okay. Assuming that underneath that paint, is okay and uh, you don't have any adhesion problems as it is okay like the ford mustang picture i showed you earlier all that paint was just chipping off 
So, uh, you know, if it was me, I would, I would like to just take it all off down to metal, put a DTM primer on it uh, or an epoxy primer and then followed by a 2K filler primer, whatever, you know, there's many ways to do it. Um, cut that down and then paint on top of that. Corolla factory paint job peeling off to primer. Do I need to spray primer to repaint or paint over existing primer? So if it's peeling down to primer, okay, I would definitely just reprime it, okay? Scuff up, sand down to the primer, scuff up that primer, maybe even take it off. But uh, I would definitely reprime, use a good 2K filler primer, um, you know, something with a DTM maybe, and uh, recode it, sand it down, block it, and then paint right on top of that, okay? And when you're sanding that, you could use anywhere from 150 grit to 220 grit. Uh, so you're not wasting your time and sandpaper. You know, you want to get a coarser grit to just take it down uh, instead of spending all day playing with it. <clears throat> Rub a base black before I clear coat. You don't have to, Ricky. As long as it looks good, okay, um, I would just recommend tacking it down. Just tack it. Make sure the dust is down. I would only sand or wet sand if you have some dust that's wedged in there that when you, you know, when you feel it, you got a little bit of dust here and there. That's the only time I would, uh, I would just rub that down with like 600 grit. Uh, but then if you do that, you might just want to just put a new fresh little light spray of black base back on that. Um, so you could clear coat over it. Okay. One brand of base coat paint with a different brand of reducer. Uh, mixing Deltron base with Transtar reducer. I think you can. I don't think you're going to have a problem with that as long as it's the same mixing ratio. So with your Transtar reducer, is that an is that a uh, uh, a pretty much universal reducer that you use in their base coats and clear coats? Um, and what's the mixing ratio? Is it one-to-one? -one? Because I know Deltron uh, is one-to-one. -one. Um, you, you shouldn't have a problem because a reducer is a reducer. Uh, but I personally like to stick with, if I can avoid that, I just like to use, you know, my nascent reducers with nascent paints or PPG reducers with PPG paints, um, you know, base coats. And then you could put any type of polyurethane clear coat on top of a base coat, any base coat brand. Okay. It's all the same stuff. So you could use a house of color, clear coat, PPG clear coat. Um, what am I using now? Acme by finish one clear coat on top of any brand base coat, no problem. Sand primer with 300. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know why you would want to finish with 300, but you can. Um, if you're finishing, I would finish with four to 600 before paint. 300's way too coarse to paint over, unless you're painting a single stage. If you're painting single stage, I've painted single stage over 320, no problems at all. Okay. I'm, I'm sure it'll probably cover 300 grit scratch mark as well. David, David, newbie here. Do I set gun pressure by the max operating pressure in the manual or use, don't even look at the manual when setting up a spray gun, you can throw it out. Um, actually, <laughs> let's see here. Um, articles and videos, paint gun. So I would recommend reading this article and then I have a video on my channel that shows you exactly how to set up a spray gun, okay? Wide open fan, um, wide open fluid flow, not fluid flow, air inlet, okay? So this, your air comes in here. This, it depends, some guns have them on the bottom, some guns have them in the back, okay? This is your main air. So you could literally lower your pressure coming out of your gun from here. You always wanna keep your main open all the way, okay? And then you're gonna be adjusting your air with your regulator, okay? So this is the same thing, your air inlet on this side, okay? You're gonna make sure this is open all the way, okay? And then you squeeze, okay? Air is gonna be coming out and then you adjust it. 25, 26 PSI for base coat, 26, 27, 28 pounds with clear coat, okay? Um, and if you want to avoid orange peel and whatnot, it's basically gun settings, good grade gun, okay? Cheap guns, 
you get what you pay for. I would recommend the medium grade gun. This is a medium medium grade gun, great gun. Um, or you can spend a thousand dollars or eight hundred or whatever and get a SADA or whatever you want. Okay, doesn't matter. But a good gun, um, distance from panel, very important, and speed, flow. Okay, those are the three main things um, to get very good paint jobs. And also, actually, another main thing is lighting, being able to see what the hell you're doing. Okay. Because if it's dry or wet or what, you need to be able to see what you're doing uh, to get non-orange peel finishes. Okay. And that's the secret to getting non-orange peel, having a medium grade, good gun. Okay. Not a cheapo crapo gun. Cause it's just not going to atomize the way you want. And it's the, the fan pattern is not going to be even cheap guns, sometimes spray heavier in the center, less on the outer sides, you know, heavier on the outer fan, not enough paint in the middle. That's where you get dryness, uneven paint, um, orange peel. Okay. So hopefully that. Okay. Last question. What happens if you use a high volume pressure on a hot dog compressor? Well, you're going to run out of volume super, super quickly. Okay. Um, if you're spraying something small, I, I don't think you, sh you don't have an issue, but you know, large things, depending on your compressor and output on that thing, um, you might have an issue. Okay. Um, so you might want to kind of get a low volume, low pressure, so a gun that uses less volume uh, when spraying using a smaller air compressor. And I'll see you guys next week, same time for Q&A, and then um, keep your eyes open for new videos on the channel. I'll talk to you soon. I got to run. Peace out. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Peace. Bye.